All right, so in this video, I'll be showing you how to make a ring in a similar way that I have already, but we're going to be using some different materials and different processes. So instead of using a CA glue or a super glue to do this, I'm going to be using a UV resin, which means it hardens with UV light or sunlight. So for an example, this is a ring that I did with UV resin. And this is a full metal ring that has a copper, brass, and silver Mocha Magane um, band on the inside, and I filled it completely with the UV resin. But we're not going to be making it using this material. We're going to be using a little bit of silver and a lot more silver, some crushed opal, UV resin, and we might be using some glow powder or some dyes, but we'll see when we get there. So the first thing we're going to need to do is figure out the ring size. I'm going to be making a size 9. So I'm just going to look on my mandrel for the 9 on here and measure to it. So a size 9 is actually about 19 millimeters. So I'll get as close as I can because I happened to move it when I took it off. And the next thing you're going to need is the thickness of your inner band. So it is about 0.6 millimeters. And I'm actually going to write that on here so I don't have to measure this every time. Until I cut that off like I normally do and then have to write it again later. Okay, so now we have to do some math. So we're going to take the 19 millimeters that we measured and then add the thickness of the metal to get that. And then we're going to multiply that by 3.14. And that is the length we need to cut to make our band in the right size. And this will be a little undersized too. I normally do it this way on purpose, especially when working with a thinner metal so I can stretch it up to be the perfect size. Because downsizing is a little bit harder and you need different tools. Upsizing, you need a hammer and a mandrel. So that's why I go a little bit tighter when doing it like this. All right, so that will be close enough. And now I'm gonna take my giant piece of silver and mark it. So to mark the silver, it's pretty easy. You can just hook this onto a, an edge if you have a flat piece, and then you can scratch the metal. It's better to do this on a flat surface though. So just like that. So now you have from here to here is the right size and it's marked. And then we need to do another sizing from here out for our thickness of the band. So I'm going to do seven millimeters. So there we go. Kind of see it on the camera. And now I just need to cut this out with a jeweler saw real quick. So when cutting these out, I always cut the smaller one first, and then I'll cut the long bit of this. So there we go, we have a little ring blank now. And I need to cut down the edges to make sure that this is gonna be flat and then cut this down a bit to make sure that everything's flat so we can solder it into a ring shape. To do that, I'm just gonna use a sanding stick that I made. And this is a uh, 320 grit sandpaper. You can also use water on it, which makes it uh, not get as clogged. All right, that should be good enough. And then any other smoothing out we'll do 
after it's formed into a ring and after we get other parts on it. Okay, so in, before forming this, I'm going to anneal it to soften this so I can actually bend it without making little kinks or anything weird in it, and it makes it a lot easier. Okay, so now that it's all gross looking and soft, you can just round it around your mandrel. It doesn't have to be in the right spot or anything. You just want the basic round shape out of it. And then with some flat pliers that have uh, no teeth so you don't scratch this up or mar it, you want to bend this into a D shape. So there you go. You want it to be as straight as possible. And then we're gonna throw this into the pickling solution to get all this black off and make sure this is clean and then we'll solder it together. Okay, so here we go. And we're going to solder this solder joint. And I'm gonna use some flux on it. Then I'm gonna take a piece of solder and place the solder joints right on top of the solder. This only really works if you have a really tight solder joint. So if you have any gaps, it's gonna just stop at the gap, most likely. I don't know how well that showed up, but basically the solder will just be sucked up this entire thing and just make a perfect solder joint. So yeah, that should be good. So I'm going to round this out and then throw it into the pickling solution and get it all cleaned up and get ready for the next uh, pieces I need to make. And to round it out, I'm just going to put it back onto my mandrel and push it down as much as I can until I get stuck, and then tap it with a rawhide mallet. And there we go, it's all the way down to the size 9. And if I take this off, flip it over, it's not a size 9. So you have to flip it and actually hit it to make sure it's the right size. So here it is all rounded out and looking like a ring now. I'm going to put this in a pickling solution to get it cleaned up and then we're going to clean it up a little bit more to make sure it's uniformed, measure it, and make the outer pieces. All right, so if you have access to a little lathe like this, you can use it to clean up the outside of this real quick and make sure it's completely um, uniform. And especially if you have these little mandrel things that I got from uh, ringsupplies.com, they make ring making super easy because you could just Put it on here and it won't come off and i have a discount from them if you're interested in it just use my um channel name which is gummy operations and you'll get a percentage off i don't remember what it is but you get percentage off so i'm just going to use some 240 grit sandpaper and water Oh, 
Also, I have this piece of plexiglass so it doesn't get water on the steel and rust everything. You can see the ring has low spots in it. And that's what I'm trying to take out, basically. So I'm going to use a sanding stick. That should be close enough. Really, you want these two edges to be 100% symmetrical. The middle doesn't matter too much because we're going to be filling it in. And this could be done on your mandrel, your normal uh, ring mandrel, and a file, which I've shown before in past videos. Yeah, see how there's bits there that are just low spots? And you could just actually use the lathe how it's intended and use the tooling piece and go over this real quick. Which I'll just show an example of. And I have an auto feeder on here or it comes with an auto feeder so it just goes across for me and there we go make short work of that so now that we're back over here i'm going to use a little bit more sandpaper to knock off any edges nothing crazy and now we can measure it so I'm going to measure towards the outside, and I'm going to try to get a average because these are normally not 100% round because you're doing it by hand. So I'm going to go with a 20.3. And then this is 16 gauge square silver wire, which is also, you also need to measure, which is about a 1.3. So with all that, we got to do the same math we did to make this, but this time we make it so it goes around the outside. So all I'm going to do is do the 20.3 and add the 1.3 to that, and then multiply that by 3.14, and there we go. That's how long I need the wire to be. There we go, that's close enough. And same thing with marking this as the wire, or as I did on this. You just kind of hook onto one end, and then scratch where you need to cut. I'm going to do that twice, but I'm going to cut this one. So I'm going to do this twice, but I'm going to cut it here and then measure from here and go down again. So I'm going to cut that off with a jeweler saw so it has a clean line. I'm also going to use one of these to make sure it's completely squared. You basically just put it in here with a little bit of it sticking up and file it. And now it's squared. And then I'm going to do the other side too because I've previously cut this wire. So that's one, and I'll do one more. Okay, once they're all annealed and everything, you're going to want to wrap them around just like you did before, or just use 
pliers. Because it's a square wire, you can get it all out of shape, so I suggest using your pliers and just slowly bend it. All right, so you just want it to be as close as possible there. And you need to do this to both of them. All right, there we go. I'm going to throw both of these into the uh, pickling solution, clean it up, and then solder both. Here are both of them all cleaned up. So we're just going to solder that little joint, just like we did on the big one, and the same exact way. So you're just going to need to put some flux on that area. You don't really have to do it with the whole thing since we're going to have to put it in the pickling solution anyways. And it'll clean off everything in there. And I'm, this is hard silver solder also that I'm using. And just heat them up until the solder flows. And you'll probably notice that I'm using my just plumbing torch for this because you don't really need to be too precise on your heating. There we go. Now all we need to do is put them into our pickling solution. So while that is cleaning off, I'm going to actually mark this with a 925 stamp. Because once I get everything done, I don't want to bend this. And I don't want to risk cracking or breaking any of the uh, inlay. So as long as you're careful around that, when cleaning and polishing the inside of this, it'll stay and everything will be fine. Everything's all out and cleaned up. So now I need to round these and then get them ready to actually be soldered on. To do that, I'm just gonna put them onto my ring mandrel. And then tap them to size with the uh, rawhide hammer. And try not to do that, because you'll have to even this out. And when putting this to the right, um, Shape. You don't want to hit it too hard because it'll stretch it and then it won't fit your center ring and that's a problem and of course you're going to do this to both of them. Also to check if they're all warped or not you can push on them and see if they move and if they move a bunch like that you're going to need to hammer it down. And again, don't hit this too hard or you'll start to flatten it. Flip it over.
and then check it on the mandrel again to make sure that it's actually round. Okay, so to assemble this, it's pretty easy. These should be fairly tight. So all you need to do is take your ring and press it down onto it. If it's too tight, you can actually hammer it in place. So we're going to solder this one on first so it doesn't move, so we can solder on the second one. Okay, so soldering these on can be a pain in the ass. The reason for that is, if you see, it's real hard to make things 100% round by hand. So you're going to be off a little bit in parts, which will leave holes, and you don't want holes, you want this to be one continuous piece. So sometimes you'll solder this whole thing sand it and you'll see little gaps and holes and then you'll have to go back and flood that area with solder again and then go back and sand it and make sure everything's good. Hopefully we can get that in one go. If not, I'll show you the process. Also of course put flux on your work. Just to kind of focus it on the area that you want your solder to flow. You can even put it on before you put that ring on, and that'll be even better. And then we're just gonna stack pieces of solder on here. Okay, that should be good enough. And if not, we'll do what I said earlier. So one thing before heating this, make sure that everything is kind of dried out or your little pieces will just shoot off and you have to pick them up and put them back and it makes it really hard or they'll fall on the edge and then if you don't notice they'll melt on the inside you have to cut all that off so try to heat it as slow as possible or just let it sit here and let it dry I'm gonna heat it slowly because I'm impatient and I want to get this done Okay, once you get it all flowy like that, you can actually move it around a bit. Alright, so what I was doing there is it slid down a little bit and I don't want that. So I was heating it and pushing this back up as soon as the metal became liquid. And I don't suggest doing that, but if you have to, that is one way to fix it. So I'm gonna put this into our pickling solution to clean it all up and then sand down this side and see if everything's where it needs to be. And if not, fill it in with a little bit more solder. It looks like right here we'll need it. Okay, it's all clean. And I need to cut it down to make sure everything's okay. So using some water and some sandpaper that's for wet or dry. This is 120 grit. Okay, I don't know if this is gonna come up but there's a little gap right there and a little bit right here and here and here. So I'm gonna fill all that in. So to do that, I'm gonna use some extra easy solder and put in those points and fill them in. But before I do that, I'm going to put this on and solder this on because if I put extra easy solder on this and then use easy or medium on this one, it's going to make that other solder flow. So I might as well put this together. So same thing as before, just put flux onto it.
Another thing you can do is put the flux on and then heat it to dry it off. And then you can place your solder bits. So you don't have to wait as long for them to dry and you don't have to worry about them moving. So there we go. All nice and soldered on. So same thing, put this in the uh, pickle link solution, clean it off, sand it down, figure out where the holes are, fill all the holes. Okay, now that I have it all cleaned up, I'm gonna sand it down. You can also, if you have a lathe, you can just put this on the lathe and cut all that off real quick. But I wanna show you how to do it using <laughs> mostly hand tools. I'm going to show, show the lathe later. And here's the other side, and it has a tiny bit here and a little bit over here. So both sides need to be fixed up a little bit more, and then it'll be good to go, and we can start doing all the inlay stuff. So let's fix that. You might have noticed that I actually have this little thing down here that allows me to spin my work. So this comes in handy, and you just put it on top of my tripod. You can put it on the um, table also. You probably don't need all this because I think this is a uh, ceramic top too, but I'd rather not ruin it. So to fix it all, just flux the top of the ring lightly so you can still see everything. And I'm going to use some easy solder and put it directly on the parts. that are um, exposed. All right, so that will fill in all the spots that I have missed. So it's all dirty on the other side now, but this side's all fixed. So I'm gonna take this, put it in the pickling solution, and then clean it up, and then add all my solder again. Okay, so it's all completely done now and cleaned up on the sides, everything's filled in. But we need to texture the inside of here to make it so when all the resin and everything sets, it has something to grab onto. So I'm gonna be using a diamond bit. All right, there we go. So it has a little bit of a texture in there. And because we're not gonna be looking at any of that, it's fine to leave it like that. If you're planning to actually see all the way through, I would suggest polishing that area. Okay, so here's some of the stuff we're gonna be using for this inlay. Like I said before, this is a UV resin. So it hardens with UV light or sunlight or this little flashlight. So this is a UV flashlight. There's these dyes that you can mix with the UV resin to change its color. Or you can use these glowing powders for different color glows. And they charge with light. So I like this one. is like a light blue or a teal or any of the other colors that you can actually see. I'm also going to be using this little pipette thing and you can get these for really cheap. All this is like six dollars. And you can also use this resin just by itself and it'll be clear. So that gives you the ability to do what I did with this ring. So let me show you how to use this to set all these um, pieces of opal into the ring. 
when doing this, I'm going to be doing it on the lathe. Mostly to hold it, but you can put this onto your mandrel also and probably get away with doing the same thing. I'm going to take some of the UV resin. Uh, make sure you have gloves on because this will get into your skin and can cause bad reactions. So just always wear gloves when dealing with this and have ventilation set up. A little bit of it in the ring. And then I'm going to take some of my stone. A lot of people like to just fill the ring basically with like a CA glue or something and then pour all this into it. And I don't like doing that because I don't like how the end result looks. I like having bigger pieces in. So all you need to do is use the RV or UV um, light and it will harden everything. So, as you can see, it's all hard now. Now that I have that whole thing filled in with glow powder, resin, and um, what is it called? Opal. I need to cure it completely. And that's where this comes in. These are UV growing lights for plants. These lights are also UV because that's what you need for growing plants in general. So I'm going to turn this on and let it sit here. So yeah, if I really wanted to, I could turn this on and make sure it gets full UV all the way around. So I'm going to let this sit here for like 20 minutes or so to cure all that up, and then I'm going to cut it. Alright, so here it is all dried up or cured. I might have to go over it again, but everything is all stuck in there and now I need to go over it with a or with the um, lay tool and cut it down. You could also use a file to cut this down because it's a really soft stone. Okay, so there it is so far. I just need to fill in a little bit more of it with some resin, cure it again, cut it, and then sand it down. So I filled in any of the little gaps and holes with more of the material, and then coated the entire thing in a thin coat of resin and cured this already. So now we don't need the actual cutting part of the lathe because we're going to be using sandpaper for all the rest of this. So with my sanding stick I'm going to basically just hold it underneath and make sure, ever, make sure that everything is uniform all the way across and then continue through the different grits until it's completely smooth and I finished all the grits. So I'm starting at 220 and I think I'm going up to about 5,000. So here that goes. Oh, and make sure to use water.
So here's the ring after all those different grits. So it's completely smooth now. I'm going to go over it with some um, rubbing compound or polishing compound and then it will be good to go on the outside. So here it is. It's all nice and shiny. There's a couple spots I wish I would have added a little bit more because you can see all the way through but I will have to do that on another one or I can drill into this cut those areas out and fill them in. So even though that's all shiny the sides still look terrible. So I'm going to polish up the inside of this and then kind of curve the outside using all the sandpapers again just on the outside but I need to clean up the inside of this and I'm going to do that with a um, polishing wheel. Alright so I'm going to clean up the inside using this little um, abrasive rubber piece. I'm going to switch it to a different um, grit and then do it again. And you keep doing this all the way down the grits that you have. And then you use a, an actual polish on the inside. Okay. So, I'm going to put this back onto the lathe and polish up these edges and round them a little bit. Because if you can see right now, it's really squared off. And I want to go for a more rounded finish on the inside and outside. So let's go do that. So one of the easiest ways to do this is to just basically half put it on to the mandrel. So it's sticking off of it. And then you're going to have to go through it with all the different sandpapers again. But rounding the inside and outside. And then take it off and flip it over and do it to the other side. Okay, so check out the difference. This is the side that I just did all the sanding work on. See how it's nice and smooth? And it has rounded edges now. And then here's the other side. How it has pretty sharp edges. So, just need to do that to the other side. Do a final polish, and this is completely done. So thank you for watching my video, and if you liked it, feel free to leave a thumbs up. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave a comment below. And if you would like to be updated every time I post a new video, subscribe to my channel. I try to put out a new video every week. Well, thank you for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.